Hi folks, I'm so happy to present this immediate implant case from beginning to end. I've been anxiously waiting to restore it and to show all these steps for uh, placing the abutment and fabricating the uh, same day Serec crown and sending this gentleman back without a gap in his front teeth. Six months ago, we extracted his front tooth and planned to place an immediate Z-Systems Zirconia ceramic implant. And this is just a recap, by the way. Uh, the full case was posted about six months ago, and most of the instrumentation and the uh, drilling is not shown here. This is just an introduction for what is coming up in the restoration phase, which we did today. Z-Systems is a Swiss company which manufactures a wide range of uh, very versatile ceramic zirconia implants. And the tissue level versions are one of my favorites because first of all, there is no gap or interface in the sensitive biological zone. And secondly, the wider tulip acts as a nice foundation and support for my uh, future keratinized gingiva. After six months of healing, the patient comes back today and we notice how healthy the surrounding gums look. There's absolutely no inflammation because zirconia is very biocompatible. And we also notice that there's a healthy bulge of the buccal cortical architecture. And we also see how healthy the papillae look with the natural stippling of the keratinized gingiva. At this stage, we naturally perform our uh, stability test, whether the implant has succeeded or not, uh, which may include also a torque test. Since this is a tissue level implant, all we have to do is just laser away the uh, gums surrounding the margins using the water lays by biolays. As we notice, there is absolutely no charring and uh, we can gently even sculpt the tissue so there is a nice emergence pattern. The zirconia implant is preppable. The implant margins itself can be modified with a new red striped diamond burr. For the choice of abutment, we have straight long, straight short and angled long, angled short. Depending on the angulation of the implant, in this case, we chose the straight long version. And these abutments are screwed in with ceramic screws. The driver for these screws is a handheld device, which will bend or break when the desired torque is achieved. After disinfection of the internal chamber, the abutment is ultimately placed. The screw is inserted gently into the hole and it is tightened, making sure we exert the forces along the axis. We carefully twist it until the uh, shaft starts bending or breaks. I personally don't let it break. I stop when it starts bending. Now we notice here that there is a gap between the abutment and the platform of the implant. This is absolutely normal because it is a conical engagement which should have the freedom to sink deep into the chamber without hitting the platform. In prepping the abutment again with a new red striped diamond and light forces used I'm also creating some flat faceting to introduce anti-rotational elements. The implant is now ready to be scanned with my CEREC scanner. As you notice here, introducing a bevel, especially on the facial side of the uh, implant, not only reinforces the anti-rotational factor for the crown, but also creates a smoother transition in the visible area and follows the contour of the gingival margin. I will not showcase the details of the uh, CEREC fabrication. However, we have to remember that implants are 
completely rigid and they have no give. Therefore, if the approximal contacts are not adjusted properly, the crown will not fit all the way and will create problems. This is uh, my favorite way of adjusting proximal contacts. And in my case, because on both sides, there was uh, a bulging filling and an older crown that will be replaced eventually, I was adjusting those adjacent contacts. Normally, you would adjust the uh, contacts on the crown itself. The crown is cemented using any dual cure composite based cement. I personally use Panavia SA. Uh, Panavia V5 is an excellent choice. Bifix, I mean, you can use anything you want. The important thing is, and which is absolutely imperative, is to remove the cement without dislodging the crown. After spot curing the buckle and lingual aspects, you gently peel off the uh, gelled phase of the cement, cure a little more, and then remove the rest of it. And after the final cure, you may go in and scale the rest of the cement out and open the contacts. But for posterior crowns, it may also be necessary to floss the proximals while holding the crown down.